So, uh, first of all, we need to ask ourselves, uh, what is this uh, and uh, how much can we impact? No, first of all, we need to understand to answer that question. When we say mission, whose mission is that? Is it an individual's or church's or, uh, or the world's or God's? No, the answer is crystal clear. It is God who wanted or who wants to see the lost, to save and seek the lost. That's what we see uh, in the gospel, how Jesus was uh, introduced. Son of man came to, he can save the lost. So now, when we say missions, uh, this is uh, from uh, Lazen uh, Covenant uh, Convention, basically from there, uh, this emerged. World evangelization requires the whole uh, church to take the whole gospel to the whole world. You know, uh, this is by uh, Billy Graham and uh, some of the eminent uh, evangelical uh, group when they met in uh, uh, Lausanne and uh, how they have put it up here, this statement, world evangelization requires the whole church, not just one denomination or even in one denomination, one particular church moving, rather the whole church, whoever, when we say in this context church, those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, he is the savior of mankind who have been transformed and uh, uh, to take the whole gospel, not prosperity gospel, if you come all if your pain will go or uh, Christian God is a good God, not that kind of thing but uh, an entire gospel and uh, the scope is not just to the uh, one group of you know people, usually we tend to see uh, poor people in any country they coming, but actually uh, the gamut is much uh, bigger, the spectrum and uh, the scope is much wider. Uh, this is from uh, uh, this uh, covenant, 1974. And as we discussed, it's God's primarily and mission is the global outreach of the global people of a global God. Before we come to understand or uh, uh, make sense of this statement, we will understand as part of God's divine mission, he called each one of us to participate along with him in accomplishment of that mission. You know, we see plenty of verses so throughout the Bible, uh, these verses are there, uh, but uh, uh, some of them uh, very prominently seen uh, could be, of course, most of us quickly turn to uh, the last verse of 28th chapter. I will read it in yeah, go therefore and make this great commission given by our Lord Jesus after uh, resurrection. Uh, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and then uh, uh, baptizing in the name of Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded to you. And uh, uh, also in the book of Ephesians, uh, uh, Paul uh, writes this. You know, what is our purpose when God has already finished? We are working from the position of uh, redemption or finished work on the cross. He says here in the 10th verse of uh, second chapter, the letter to Ephesians, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And in the book of Romans and uh, Second Corinthians, the ministry of reconciliation, how God took this step. He is the one who has done the full thing and uh, we are invited to take part in this. So, so coming, coming back to this uh, statement, mission is the global outreach, that means to reach out the entire globe of the global people of global God. God is not just limited to NLF Coimbatore or NLF uh, uh, in, in the uh, country or one particular Christian group. The Lord God creator is God of each and every person. That is the mindset we, we need to uh, develop. Uh, my uh, problem with uh, uh, people who are strong Calvinistic, they say that person he's not chosen. You see, and we quickly uh, jump into conclusion and say, uh, 
no point of telling that but the worst uh, you know the, how, that's how paul introduces himself one of the uh, worst sinners he says god has chosen him for his work so if it is so how much careful we need to uh, interpret uh, what god is going to do with his holy spirit only if we align ourselves into that ministry we will be able to see that so uh, moving on uh, scope of mission let's spend some time uh, as i mentioned it's very obvious the moment we say missions all the uh, remote areas how they have been doing uh, we 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 tend to uh, quickly jump to those conclusions but what exactly uh, and how can we relate we are working throughout the week monday to saturday and sitting here on sunday and how can we be missionaries in uh, some places of how i am saying but actually uh, these are the key terms that we need to understand how they all differ from each other job career and vocation so a simple illustration author unknown but uh, uh, here we see three stone cutters as traveler uh, found these three stone cutters working at a, a, a construction site he asked the first uh, uh, stone cutter uh, what are you doing here what's happening he said uh, yeah i got this job i got this work to do and uh, I, i i'm thankful for that because i get some money and i can uh, feed my children uh, my uh, i mean uh, my family can be uh, secured with the money that i get from that so i'm i'm working for my family you know earning some money uh, okay he just moved on and uh, same working site he asked another uh, stone cutter what are you doing here uh, what 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 what's happening here he said you know what uh, i am a big uh, very artistic stone cutter in this city and uh, i know how to uh, carve this uh, very carefully i gain experience so uh, the person who hired me he understood i am a good uh you know stone cutter and uh, he hired me here and i'm doing to the perfection and the traveler moved ahead and asked the third person what are you doing here uh the third person replied you know i am building the cathedral i am building a cathedral here you know three people were doing the same work same task in the same place but three of them told differently person who wanted money to uh, you know have that security or for feeding his family that's there's nothing wrong in that most of us do that but his perspective uh, perspective was job what he was doing is job but the sub- second person uh, who is telling i am the best person best uh, uh, artist or craftsman here in the city he had this orientation of uh, uh, career in fact uh, this word career comes from this latin word uh, uh, carry uh, so, uh, and uh, uh, french and other words also uh, italian words as they as it evolved it's, it's basically a uh, race line or course or wheeled vehicle in early days how uh, chariots were used for uh running the race that, that's the thing so you do your best in your in what you do that's the uh, concept that's career but vocation or calling is something much bigger big, uh, bigger and uh, beyond these understandings and it is very much relevant in our lives as we redeemed children of god we are not doing anything to gain salvation or to please god uh if you have that understanding by uh, going to remote places so that i can um, i can impress god uh, sorry you are wrong and we move to uh, this uh, i like uh, vivam's uh, founder uh, lauren cunningham and uh, uh, campus crusade uh, for christ uh, founder uh, bill bright they have uh, Uh, come up with this uh, concept of the seven mountains of societal influence how each and every culture in any part of the world how these things are there including 
you know remote areas there is arts and entertainment business uh, education family government media and religion how each of these things actually if you see uh, somewhere are uh, somewhere in these uh, mountains you will fit into these things but of course uh, there is no mention of healthcare probably they would have meant uh, education covers that uh, but healthcare itself uh, a, a great uh, uh, you know uh, phenomenal movement has happened especially in india and uh, other Uh, countries how missionaries chose to start mission hospitals uh, creating the culture of caring for the poor for the uh, widowed uh, women and also uh, uh, you know caring for the persons with the tuberculosis uh, uh, you know uh, buildings uh, sanitary for them and also uh, people with uh, leprosy how they were taken care of so what they say each and every part of that of course few months back we had our friends uh, went to uh, attend how media can uh, be utilized uh, you know to bring the gospel to the uh, uh, you know lost so uh, yes coming back to the last weeks uh, happenings as i was uh, preparing as i started preparing i just uh, uh, prayed and uh, I, I, I as i was seeing i came across this uh, couple of things that really disturbed me uh, one was last sunday exactly as we were having a uh, prayer time here in delhi one of the churches was attacked by hindu people that was the uh, disturbing news and another uh, you know uh, news that made all indians uh, happy was chandrayaan 3 launching you know uh, it, it it did not fit into my a uh, heart how to celebrate these two uh, together or celebrate or put them together uh, news as much as we see uh, you know most of the times they are depressing and uh, but we need to be aware of what's happening so that you can be relevant to the context i was also fascinated by uh, india's mission because india is the f- uh, fourth country to uh, put its flag on the uh, surface of the moon uh but if you just go back and see how people who uh, know the lord they used their uh, uh, talents or they, their uh, abilities the, their opportunities to uh, to bring that glory to god uh, there are a couple of people who actually walked on the surface of moon uh, in 1969 71 72 uh, a lot of uh, missions happened from us and uh, you, you you see Uh, apollo 15 and apollo 16 uh, james evin is from apollo 15 mission and uh, charlie duke from uh, 17 i'd like to read some of the uh, things that they have mentioned okay james evin uh, spent the next 20 years after he finished his uh, trip to moon uh, he spent his rest of the life as goodwill ambassador for the prince of peace stating that Jesus walking on the earth is more important than man walking on the moon. He said that his experiences in space had made God more real to him than before. Irvin and his wife uh, stated that his Christian rebirth or born again experience which happened uh, while he was in space saved their marriage and made their lives uh, much happier and established and how they have uh, gone on to uh, minister and about uh, charlie duke uh, you can google or see lot of uh, videos uh, about him how he publicly confesses his faith he also says this uh, duke stated that his marriage and his relationship with his children improved considerably uh, after he committed his life to jesus and both duke and dotty his wife who became a christian before him credit god with making their lives much more complete and joyful with duke being active in christian ministry so uh, what i'm stating here is how using various opportunities uh, or positions that they held they did not see it as an accidental thing they understood god has given that experience god has placed them in that particular position 
just like how we see in the book of Esther, how she utilized her position to save the nation of Israel. And basically acting as the ambassadors of the living God. I would like to play this video. I am not sure audio will come. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Charlie Duke. Uh, a few words. So, this just a few words. Hardly this is 30 second video. The walk on the moon did not change my life. But the walk with Jesus entirely changed my life. And the powerful uh, integration that he has committed, he has given his life. He was a test pilot, but he got uh, rigorous, aggressive training to reach that state. You and I cannot walk on the moon straight away. I cannot uh, say bye to my children uh, and go to moon and uh, come back in the evening. You know, with that experience, he is mentioning this. Uh, the most important thing, even a little child can walk the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, using all these uh, opportunities. Living a missional life, how uh, you and I can live this missional life? What can we do? I mean, we have been listening to many messages week after week and uh, some of these things, I am not sure how many of you actually go back and uh, open uh, the messages because when you reflectively listen again and again or when you meditate on these uh, words, they really impact us a lot and uh, mission is all about uh, mission is basically an impact of the biblical understanding uh, of uh, theology and uh, that theology should be the foundation for what uh, for our mission that we engage in be it uh, uh, involving uh, in uh, you know uh, counseling or uh, uh, ministering the uh, youth or uh, you know, involving in church activities or whatever the mission. And uh, we know from the book of Ephesians, fivefold ministry is there. But uh, there are plenty varieties of uh, uh, ministries or missions. You know, uh, I thought, okay, it, I was thinking to have an understanding. How many types of missions can be there? Okay, I resolved probably since the time of, uh, uh, you know, creation of man, Till now, how many number of, uh, uh, as many as uh, human beings that have ever lived on the face of the earth, that many number of God's mission, I'm talking uh, to bring the, uh, uh, you know, good news or being an ambassador. But at the same time, I, I realized even one person can shift from one type of mission to another type of mission. You know, cross-cultural mission is only one type of mission and there is nothing like one is better than the other and God knows uh, who has been doing what and what level the commitment is and uh, sometimes it's very deceiving uh, to see great numbers because getting numbers itself is not a wrong thing because ultimately we were called to uh, be fruitful multiply and uh, have dominion for the creation that God has entrusted us uh, but living a life worthy of our calling being set apart never compromising on the aspect of uh, personal walk with the Lord, walking in integrity, that sense of, uh, uh, you know, uh, I do not belong to this world. I do not. At the same time, God has given a mission in this world to reach out the lost. Because somebody has reached out to me uh, with his spirit, now I am available to the Lord. So, uh, in fact, none of us can uh, say that, Oh, brother, that is uh, somebody else's job to go uh, and do the mission work. No, you are a, uh, you are in a wrong understanding. The moment you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior and uh, uh, become a born again believer, each and every one of us have been given uh, uh, this mission to reach out those who are lost and persecution will be there it's not a new thing it's not uh, something just happened and uh, that post of uh, that video quite disturbing for me uh, because people entering with the sticks with mask faces hitting everybody chasing the children and women out of the uh, house church quite disturbing and not just that a list of things uh, persecution relief actually uh, puts up into uh, prayer 
diary uh, as you read through how a lot of effort, uh, you know a lot of attacks happen on the christianity but in the midst of all these things what i'm trying to say is to have the sense that i have been called by the lord jesus christ and if this is the tr- uh, truth then it is really worth dying for this truth and when you get that kind of a conviction nobody can actually stop you you will be a blessing to your family your uh, uh, church or uh, uh, place wherever you are working god has placed you so if everybody goes to uh, you know to the resource poor setting who will be there in the corporate setups who will be there in the business field who will be there in the uh, educational institutions in coimbatore or uh, all the software or uh, uh, where social media is actively you know uh, spewing all kinds of uh, uh, false things you know now everything is dying uh, is done outrightly like uh, uh, you can google and somebody is telling uh, how to commit suicide or uh, how to uh, involve in such and uh, such things i think uh, dr matthew was mentioning so many things are happening unless we who know the full whole truth who will be there in those areas so all that stems out from you being living uh, being in a condition uh, that uh, uh, you set up part yourself uh, for the lord and uh, living this life worthy of his calling and willing to be transformed every day and uh, no compromise on uh, spiritual disciplines so spending time with the lord uh, sequentially or synchronously uh, sequentially i mean to say first thing in the morning do it or uh, if you are a person who thinks um, at the uh, just before bed i will be uh, quiet any part of the time but uh, that can happen or even synchronously as you uh, move towards your car or as you uh, drive or as you uh, if you are a, in a medical field before you see the next patient as you walk from uh, one room to one room you know you get a lot of uh, opportunities where you can pray short prayers uh i thank uh, uh, pastor wilson he sent some of this uh, uh, prayer points as current context how it's happening and it's like you, you don't have to see the newspaper or uh, news and uh, you don't have to get depressed seeing all the depressive news when you convert the context using the text into a prayer request uh, your life will be very effective and at the same time to nurture to foster our own uh, spiritual walk with the lord with all the uh, spiritual disciplines it includes everything fasting or uh, uh, fellowshiping or uh, you know bible uh, bible reading that includes reading studying meditating memorizing or uh, uh, more importantly apply, applying all the biblical principles and also i'll just move on being mentoring mentored or uh, mentoring uh, those who need it and i just quickly move to uh, a couple of examples uh, uh don and uh, carol richardson uh, they are actually uh, missionaries to this place uh, uh, called uh, irin jaya iriana jaya in uh, uh, new papagini um, they were actually canadian min- uh, missionaries uh, sorry for telling Uh, a cross cultural ministry but in the context of uh, this one month i think it's good to see some of these uh, dramatical things to influences and at the same time to be challenged there are still people brothers and sisters please wake up and understand that uh, around 2 or 3% of the persons the so called uh, christians in the country but uh, if you see the believers the numbers will be even more lesser of course some may say uh christians number may be higher than what it is now uh, but the fact remains the same it is still a lot we need to reach out to those who never heard the gospel of christ yes in this context i would like to uh, just throw some light on uh, this mean, uh, uh, missionary couple uh, don richardson and uh, carol richardson his wife uh they were of course missionaries and they most of them they were trained in medical aspects also in 1962 they moved to this place in papua new guinea it is 
among the Savi uh, tribe, these tribe, tribe people are very notorious for their uh, uh, belief system and uh, their treachery. You know, uh, in any uh, human race, if you tell uh, treachery is wrong or betraying or killing is wrong, they will understand quickly, oh yes, uh, I understand or they show those manifestations. But this tribe takes pride or they honor this treachery. So, whenever somebody befriend or uh, betray or kill, basically these are cannibalistic. So, they uh, it's a good uh, meal also when they kill other person, they, they get a good meal, uh, you know, no need to hunt a running deer. So, that is how they see it as killing another person, the two betraying or befriending them is a great thing among these tribal people. So, that is the context where this particular couple uh, has gone to. And uh, after uh, working for few weeks, of course, they were uh, helping out in uh, uh, some of the medical aspects and also probably some education. Uh, they were trying to, uh, uh, you know, incorporate some of the biblical uh, teachings also. When they told about Jesus Christ, how he was uh, betrayed by his own uh, uh, companion, they were celebrating Judas Iscariot. Instead of uh, uh, understanding uh, Jesus is the one who uh, became uh, the person who was deceived or, you know, Oh wow, they are all prizing Judas Iscariot because that is the culture they were living in. Uh, so, they were very depressed. What is happening? And uh, this tribe cannot be changed or they cannot be introduced about Christ and better before we spread false doctrine in their terms, uh, let us move out. Probably that is what they would have thought. But uh, they mentioned this to the village leaders and two villages are there in this uh, Savi uh, uh, tribal community. One was uh, Hamena and another was uh, uh, Kamur. So, uh, Hanam, Hanam and Kamur. So, these are neighboring cities. I just read it out. They were constantly warring against each other. And after several months, these Richard, uh, Richardsons were not able to convince these uh, two settlements between uh, these two villages. And they announced they would have to move elsewhere to minister. Uh, the Savi not will, wanting to lose the benefits to be gained by having Westerners living among them suddenly declared that uh, they were going to make peace with each other. Wow, this is brilliant. Now, how they can make peace with each other? The Richardsons uh, wondered how such peace could possibly be established given the long history of hatred, treachery and distrust that existed between the villages. So now, I just read out this story. The morning after announcing their intention to make peace, first a leader from Hanam, then a leader from Kamu state uh, started to carry one of their own infant sons toward the neighboring enemy village. But in the first case, the father from Hanam was prevented from doing so by family members who snatched the child back from him and in the second instance the Kamur father obviously distraught changed his mind and turned back to his own village. Suddenly a young Kamur father named Kayo uh, he picked up his own six months old only child his only child and began running swiftly very fast towards the other enemy village. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, pleading him to stop. Uh, okay, uh, his wife, uh, Kayo's wife chased after him, but uh, she fell in the ditch and she could not stop him. But when he arrived, this man Kayo uh, arrived at uh, Hainam, he came face to face with a line of his uh, mortal enemies. Mahor, he called out to one of them. When Mahor stepped forward, Kayo asked, Mahor, will you plead the words of Kamur? Among your people, when Mahor stated he would, Kayo continued, then I give you my son and with him my name. Basically, I will be giving my six month old infant to you with my name in your village. Both are Savi tribes, but one village young man giving his own infant knowing that 
this other persons can actually uh, betray this thing and uh, actually can kill and have a nice desert out of this baby still this man his own uh, father coming up to give his child and uh, an infant uh, from hanam was presented to kayo who made the same sort of pledge that mahor had pronounced moments earlier so both the village people they have exchanged this young infants uh, you know in in the uh, covenant of peace so this is called peace child so that's the title the child who is given to the other village that's called uh, that uh, that infant the, or the child is called peace child okay so now all this don richards uh, don richardson and his wife they are seeing what's happening i know both of them coming together is a big thing uh, and if they come together they will either kill or you know all the uh, uh whatever wrong thing that could happen will definitely happen so they are wondering what will happen but as they were fearing uh, what harm uh, might come to this infants who had been given to the enemy villagers uh, but uh, he was assured by the uh, two villagers uh, both sides they told that those children would be carefully protected to uh, pro carefully protected so peace could continue between the two uh, villages two settlements when richardson asked why all this was necessary the savvy answered that whole tribe said you have been urging us to make peace don't you know it's impossible to have peace without a peace child so they are telling there must be a peace child so richardson went on to use that deeply rooted cultural tradition as a redemptive analogy of god's uh having sent his only son jesus christ to reconcile his enemies those who were opposed to him and uh, rebelling against him to himself thus establishing peace between forgiven people and holy god that peace child analogy in fact served as the basis of the breakthrough in the savvy's understanding that led many of them to saving faith in christ and uh, uh, the reflection goes on like this in the book of luke when uh, uh, we all read in the time of uh, uh, christmas season uh, you know they declared who angels glory to god in the highest they announced the angels announcing the birth of jesus to the shepherds glory to god in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests God was providing a savior to make a way for human beings to come to be at peace with him to be reconciled to him by trusting in the savior people could have their sins which estranged them from God now forgiven Christ Jesus was the ultimate peace child so that was the uh, analogy that uh, uh, Richardson used to bring that uh, thing of course they they had son there and uh, it was he is also a uh, great speaker uh, reminiscing all the memories from that uh, mission field but we see that uh, in the book of romans or corinthians we see ministry of reconciliation that was given to us paul uh, keeps talking about and how important it is to reach out to those who do not know and still living in darkness and uh, uh, you know uh, this country india uh, how it is portrayed now is totally different how it was 100 and 200 years back if husband dies usually those days young girl as young as 12 year old 13 year old girl was married to a 60 or 70 year old man who dies and rest of the life that uh, child will live as a uh, widow or given to a pros uh, temple prostitution if you see uh, some of the uh, 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 things are like uh, sculpture erotic sculpture that pro uh, that uh, uh, promoted the temple prostitution and uh, how lepers were burnt alive lepers lepers were uh, buried alive and uh, people with tuberculosis they were thrown out of the villages how uh, you know even women were 
really uh, given a uh, least space even at the time of uh, uh, labor or uh, during the antenatal uh, time during the pregnancy time they were not given proper care proper diet and the cow dung was put after the uh, baby delivery happened you know lot of uh, uh, illiteracy was there darkness was there and more than that casteism and how the society was totally in darkness more, more or less most of the country north or south any part of the country was totally in darkness and there comes the missionaries how they have uh some of the missionaries really uh, amazing now we we uh, sometimes uh, grumble about our travel uh, dr catherine who started madras uh, uh, hospital in uh, chatisgarh she traveled from the us 6 months by ship and then one week by train from bombay to uh, uh, raipur and from raipur to uh, basta uh, she traveled by walk and uh, uh, that took a few more days you see just to go there and uh, to minister we are talking uh, this i think 1892 how these people who were motivated how they used their medical knowledge whatever they had definitely what we uh, use the technology in even in the medical field was not there but whatever they learned whatever they have uh understood this can be very well utilized for the people who are there in the dark unless they took that decision they would not have come and we would not have been able to send chandrayaan to moon today coming back to the current context how we boast about our present performance without realizing the blood of martyrs in this very country how they have given their lives some of them william carey or uh, mother teresa or uh, uh you know uh, so many people actually i mean uh, i can remember this christian women doctors who never uh, had this thought of coming to india but seeing the pathetic situation where women themselves first of all forget about uh, women not being uh, cared by the people in the society because caring culture was not there if you care uh, you are doing something apart from the religion if you are disturbed uh, you are disturbing your prayer and helping out some person your gods and your karma will be uh, angry with you that's the world view people had before missionaries came to india but it was the missionaries or the convicted hearts who ushered in this caring culture into the country and that same god is with us now asking us to be relevant to the current context how you and i need to be relevant people are still in darkness we are discussing uh, day after day how and seeing various things through news or in our working workplace at our workplaces and in the society we are seeing uh, how much more we need to be charged and how much more we need to be uh, understanding we are in the uh, uh, you know missional uh, responsibility Uh, of course each and every one of us uh, do have a story to tell uh, uh, and if i ask you many of you can tell wonderful news wonderful uh, stories about how god used to bring your neighbor your friend uh, to the lord and uh, or through uh, the ministry or the work that you are doing i just quickly uh, take us uh, how god has called me as uh, uh, I'm, or i mean uh, forgive me again uh, this will be Uh, some of the things are uh, cross cultural thing but uh, by uh, by uh, by giving the account of uh, my life here uh, i do not say this is the only way or only type of uh, mission but uh, god used some of the uh, you know uh, some of the threads to bring that beautiful garment together as he knit together uh, i would like to share my journey also so this duncan hospital established in 1930 on indo nepal border again by the same uh, organization i just uh, uh, told the story of uh, don richardson who worked for uh, this organization called regions beyond uh, union rbmu regions beyond uh, ministry union basically uh, that's the word uh, phrase rather we get it 
from the book of uh, second corinthians uh, regions beyond that means not just in the area where already ministry has been done but beyond that where nobody has reached before so with that same focus this rbmu works and uh, uh, this rbmu uh, missionary is don richardson and also cecil duncan who established established uh, this hospital on indo nepal border because uh, nepal king did not give permission for him to enter uh, to to start a uh, hospital because they understood this christian missionaries wherever they are going they are taking the bible and uh, preaching about their god so they did not allow this doctor to enter so he started this exactly on the border in fact uh, from there you can walk into the country buy some vegetables and come also without passport uh, that's the border area and uh, yeah this is the staff current staff and if you see this is uh duncan hospital you see on the indo nepal border and my journey started there uh, after i finished m- uh, my uh, mbbs just like anybody else i wanted to study for my pg entrance because i as i uh, uh, mentioned in the previous message also come from a, a background where uh, you know not much things were provided in fact i had, uh, started going to medical college when i joined medical college we were living in a thatched house mud walls so that was the uh, context i uh, studied or joined uh, medical college in uh, in vizag uh, so i had this desire to excel in my studies to provide good care again in andhra or either vijayawada or vizag or some of the places so i wanted to study well after my internship uh, but thankfully evangelical medical fellowship of india uh conducted one one week uh, uh, foundational course on uh, medical missions it's an intensive course uh, again in the mission hospital in orissa where we could attend very few people and uh, extensively studying the health context history of medical missions or uh, life of christ how uh, the entire bible uh, is about uh, missions and how god is trying to reach out and inviting us to uh be part of his work um and when he was uh, i mean a lot of things were there health uh, indicators and how we can impact the country by uh, uh, serving in mission hospitals especially located in the resource poor settings uh nothing really convinced me uh, how to go ahead okay idellame everything is good but how to uh, step forward in, in an informal chat with one of my mentors uh, dr manu jacob uh i was discussing various things and he said this clearly which is we tend to see how uh we move forward based on uh, your uh, background your family whom to marry which specialization you need to take or uh, where to settle uh, how much money or uh, job security so so many things are there for you to take a decision but uh change that paradigm you know see god's big picture and then with the resources or with the training that you have received how you can uh, you know put yourself into that big picture like just like a, a big uh, jigsaw uh, jigsaw puzzle where each piece has its own role so that's how i was challenged so uh, i immediately uh, uh, you know requested my father to book the tickets to raksol my father didn't have a clue that which state uh, that uh, place called raksol is in but thankfully he did it and he wanted to ensure that i was safe so he also traveled along with me and uh, traveling to raksol itself is altogether a different uh, thing they don't believe in reservation concept at least uh, 10 15 years back uh, even if you uh, book your birth you are a human being i am a human being let me also sit in the uh, sleeper class whatever so uh so i mean the moment you step into that place you really like it because people are so lovely not what we think uh because even um uh i'll tell uh, some of the stories there so having good mentors there also was a very uh, uh very you know blessed experience there uh we seen patients you know not like uh, uh, some mysterious diseases like how we see in the tertiary care hospitals but pneumonia or uh, diarrhea people dying uh, because there is no uh, prompt treatment uh, or trauma 
referral center for that hospital either in patna uh, bihar's capital or uh, kathmandu nepal's capital which is equally uh, far away from that uh, place so this hospital has been doing a great work and its team of doctors who committed most of them are from either from cmc velour or cmc ludhiana or some of them they come there for uh, uh, exposure uh, but praise god for this uh, experience as a junior doctor and uh, later has been also joined after completing uh, post graduation and we invite new comers there uh, this is some of the life there you know traveling around eating everywhere and uh, uh, there after completing 2 years of my work i i felt like uh, uh, i need to you know uh, spend some time with uh, the missionaries there i to applied for annual leave for one month and i stayed uh, even remote a village one of the villages uh, it's called singhasni 20 kilometers away from that hospital i stayed with the uh, iem uh, missionary there uh, for one month uh, no place properly even to lie down or sit and i was used to that so it was not a big deal for me the first three days i had to face three snakes there and uh, uh, there was no uh, lock for the bathroom also so you you have to make sure you sing a very good song so that other brother knows you are inside so uh, yeah uh, this right person uh, that right side person is uh, mr andrew uh, from iim again from tamil nadu uh, it's it's not like uh, just you go there and uh, throw some uh, uh, gospel tablets and come out you know you have to be part of the culture you have to live with them you have to and these people are most loving and uh, the man who you are seeing there uh he is uh, one of the pandits and he would like to listen about jesus christ and uh, talking about christ and understanding opening scriptures is like uh, they will not let you go without giving you food and they insist on staying also such a lovely people that i have ever seen of course people are there in that one month period i have uh, faced uh, some young uh, as young as 16 year old 17 year old throwing stones or some people entering the uh, church service just like how we are having now people coming with rods and uh, you know stop you are converting all those things all these things will keep happening but on the other side there are good uh, uh, people who really seek the truth they are also there uh, well informed people a lot of uh, whole house is full of books okay this is some of the uh, lifestyle there that's a mode of uh, transport there dr matthew george i think uh, uh, some of you know he is one of our mentors and the team was really motivated uh, dr philip and uh, dr lisa and uh, uh, good friends were there we did enjoy uh, you know world cup matches and uh, you know good fellowship we used to uh, meet uh, food and uh, fellowshipping praying together sharing all of our burdens uh, there was one time i was very depressed because uh, night duty was uh, extremely busy some four five cesarean sections i was doing in the operation theater and one woman uh, uh was there waiting for her uh, lab room bed but uh, she could not get it and the baby became very sick and uh, uh, on my mind i was thinking okay I, uh, duty means it was around 36 hours most of the time lunch was at 4 4 pm in the afternoon and uh, uh, dinners could be as early as 2 am so that's how lifestyle was uh, but uh, when when a woman uh, came for the delivery uh, baby uh, you know uh, uh, somehow missed out in the lab room from, from nursing uh, side but i was stuck in the operation theater but next day i was very uh, depressed and i wanted to pack and come to uh, come back to because i was not able to cope up that and plenty of uh, uh, resuscitations emergencies all these things happen you being a, a single junior doctor managing many things was very difficult but during those times these are the mentors who knew the lord who have gone through the similar situations they have invited even if it is it was 11 pm for a cup of coffee and praying listening to our stories so such a blessed uh, uh, time that we had it I never i felt like sacrifice you know god really takes you to places like this to polish you to uh, to make you more closer to him more than ever before and thank god for all these things and this is the place where i have uh, stayed i was telling uh, one month period uh, with uh, uh, brother andrew and yeah 
So, as I mentioned, this is one uh, leprosy center started again by Christian missionaries and uh, how uh, they were a great uh, blessing uh, for the local community there. And they don't do it to really, you know, somehow instill the, uh, 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 you know, uh, conversion and all. They do because they understood the concept of, you know, thy kingdom come on earth where sickness is addressed well. Healing is reached to the uh, people who need it the most. Okay, and uh, of course, uh, after by training in physical medicine and rehabilitation, especially, uh, uh, you know, uh, involved with the care of persons with disability, that itself a, a, a testimony how I was destined to become an orthopedician, but after seeing the uh, patients there, I realized that I needed to spend time uh, with the patients most and uh, uh, people with spinal cord injury or stroke or brain injury patients, uh, the uh, long ordeal that they go through as individual and as uh, family, I felt very uh, connected to uh, persons with disabilities. So, that's how uh, I got trained in uh, CMC Velour uh, in physical medicine and rehabilitation and went back and started some of the things. And uh, Duncan Hospital also has, uh, over a period of time, uh, uh, you know, grown up, uh, has a uh, school of nursing and a lot of community projects reaching out persons with uh, uh, drug uh, abusers, IV, uh, or uh, even among those uh, commercial uh, sex workers or, uh, uh, you know, uh, supplying uh, nutrition and uh, taking care of the children and uh, various community projects that happen along with the uh, inpatient and outpatient care with plenty of surgeries and uh, uh, OPD, everything happens. Now, it's all advanced uh, thing also came. Uh, including CT scan for which uh, actually wife and I, we came down to South to get trained in uh, radiology so that uh, we can go back and be part of the uh, um, work ministry that is going on. And uh, uh, some of these things really, I really thank God uh, for the opportunities. Uh, we go once or twice in a week uh, to tell about Jesus to the patients who are uh, oppressed, who are really going through a difficult situation introduced about Christ. This is the nursing station, and uh, some of the, uh, I mean, most of them, if you see, they are there only to do the work of God. Very menial, uh, uh, you know, uh, salaries. But expenses also uh, will be less there because you don't have to have a car or uh, so many things are not required there. It's a uh, very good campus to live in with uh, less thing, less resources in, as such. But good opportunities, projecting gospel movies or sharing tracks or uh, counseling and spending time. There is a dedicated uh, counseling center where people are prayed for. A lot of things happening there. I would like to share about uh, this gentleman, Mr. Raju Sahni. He worked here in Erod, one of the uh, garment shop. His job was to filter out which is a uh, good one and uh, which is not good garment for uh, you know uh, exporting. So he on his way to buy his wedding suit, his wedding got fixed and he, he went back to his place, uh, Raksol. He is from Raksol, native of Raksol. So, he uh, met with an accident on the way to buy his wedding suit and uh, he injured his spinal cord and he became paraplegic. Uh, his fiancée, she moved on with her life and uh, he became more depressed. He is a paraplegia patient. He had good potential for even walking but no facility was there. Uh, nobody even educated him how to prevent pressure ulcers also because patients with spinal cord injury, they lose the sensation below their level of injury. So, this person developed plenty of bed sores, all the buttock regions, knee joints and the heel, plenty of uh, as many as eight and using the joint fluid, uh, such a difficult situation. He attempted suicide three times. And he came to me when we went there, not for treatment, not for further uh, management. He came to ask me uh, poison so that he can conveniently die because three times he failed. He was not able to go to a shop to buy the poison also. So that was the condition uh, and God used team members. And we could operate and I, uh, by God's amazing grace, all his wounds were healed. He took almost uh, uh, four months 
and uh, he was rehabilitated according to his uh, level of injury and uh, as per the recovery expected and now he was made to be part of uh, duncan that hospital he is working as a staff there helping uh, navigating the patients who come there uh, sitting at the enquiry writing all the uh, all the uh, forms uh, but uh, uh, to cut the long story short and also it's not one man's uh, 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 show or one particular person's involvement whole community of duncan hospital has accepted him as zone staff and the church amazing thing i i remember brother baiju who is working as a missionary uh, uh, from kerala he moved there as a family how he uh, you know empties the urine bag because persons with spinal cord injury they will not they don't have uh, urine control so they have to have urine bag all the time uh, so this pastor used to carry him uh, to the house church where they uh, ran and also uh, you know emptying the urine bag of this person you know plenty of people uh, have come together uh, to help him to know his creator and now he is a very good believer baptized and uh, he is living for the lord in various ways he in fact uh, you know came up with one uh, video documentary also how uh, uh you know how a person who knows the lord can make an impact so uh, so uh, i can share his story here without his consent because his de- desire is to tell the world how god saved him god given the opportunity so just uh, uh, encourage it doesn't just happen at a snap of a finger but it takes lot of prayer our efforts our expertise uh uses god uses his church bringing people together and all that we do is not changing uh his culture or not changing the way he dresses up or uh, um, external things but inside his heart he knows now th- his creator and he's really uh, serving the lord with his heart okay coming to the summary what we have seen biblical base of missions it all starts from the heart of god uh, not a great idea of uh, uh, an individual or a church uh, rather it is his mission and we have been invited to take part and uh, it's a great privilege for us to be in that position and scope of missions we have plenty of opportunities in fact where you are you are a missionary there and you can do wonders for the lord with his spirit with his help if you are sensitive to his word what he is to say to you and also living a missional life yes we cannot uh, emphasize more on this because uh, unless you are in touch with your parent as whenever we say ambassador your own country what your own country's leader is telling unless you do not know you cannot be an ambassador in a foreign country so living a life a uh, missional life uh in close proximity with the lord and uh, uh, gaining daily uh, truths from his word and as we saw a few examples uh, this is not just restricted to these examples and do not uh, misunderstand that cross cultural mission work is the only mission wherever god has placed it is all equal and i really thank god for the example our uh, church has put it up and uh involving in our own business involving our own uh, healthcare how we can uh you know effectively reach out to the people who are uh, at the verge of uh, you know um, destroying their lives and i just changed my type of mission when i moved from uh roxall to cmc velour uh, there god helped me to start this distance education in rehabilitation medicine especially to help pers- uh, doctors in the uh, primary health care to take care of persons with disability and my mission from cmc velour when i moved as a family uh, uh, when we moved as a family to coimbatore it has changed into you know being a missionary in the corporate setup you know we keep changing our phases but everything anything if we have the right perspective we are uh, missionaries in the sight of god i would like all of us to close our eyes and as we take one or two uh, minutes uh, just think about what god has called me and how much 
uh, missional mindedness i am having in my uh, at my workplace or in the family just as we have seen in the uh, seven mountains of uh, influence how each and everything of uh, uh, every mountain of that can influence me where that in, uh, intersects with my life and uh, uh, have i missed any opportunity or is god asking me to be missionary in one particular context